Isaiah chapter 44, titled, Proud to be Called Israel. Verse 1. But for now, dear servant Jacob, listen, yes, you, Israel, my personal choice. God who made you has something to say to you. The God who formed you in the womb wants to help you. Don't be afraid, dear servant Jacob. Jeshurun, the one I chose, for I will pour water on the thirsty ground and send streams coursing through the parched earth. I will pour my spirit into your descendants and my blessing on your children. They shall sprout like grass on the prairie, like willows alongside creeks. This one will say, I am God's, and another will go by the name Jacob. That one will write on his hand God's property and be proud to be called Israel. God, King of Israel, you Redeemer, God of the angel armies, says, I'm first, I'm last, and everything in between. I'm the only God there is. Who compares with me? Speak up. See if you're measure up. From the beginning, who else has always announced what's coming? So what is coming next? Anybody want to venture a try? Don't be afraid and don't worry. Haven't I always kept you informed? told you what was going on. You are my eyewitnesses. Have you ever come across a God, a real God, other than me? There's no rock like me that I know of. All those who make no God idols don't amount to a thing, and what they work so hard at making is nothing. Their little puppet gods see nothing and know nothing. They're total embarrassments. Who would bother making gods that can't do anything? that can't God. Watch all the no-God worshippers hide their faces in shame. Watch the no-God makers slink off humiliated with their idols f uh, fail them, when their idols fail them. Get them out of here, or get them out here in the open. Make them face God, reality. The blacksmith makes his no-God, works it over in his forge, hammering, uh, hammering it on his anvil, such hard work, he works away, fatigued with hunger and thirst. The woodworker draws up plans for his no-god, traces it on a block of wood. He shapes it with chisels and planes into human shape. A beautiful woman, a handsome man, ready to be placed in a chapel. He first cuts down a cedar, or maybe picks out a pine or oak, and lets it grow strong in the forest, nourished by the rain. Then it can serve a double purpose. Part he uses as firewood for keeping warm and baking bread. From the other part, he makes a god that he worships, carves it into a god's shape and prays before it. With half, he makes a fire to warm himself and barbecue his supper. He eats his fill and sits back satisfied with his stomach full and his feet warmed by the fire. Ah, this is the life. And he still has half left for a god, lowercase g. Made to his personal design, a handy, convenient no god to worship whenever so inclined. Whenever they need, whenever the need strikes him, he prays to it. Save me, you're my god. Pretty stupid, wouldn't you say? Don't they have eyes in their heads? Are they, are their brains working at all? Doesn't it occur to them to say, Half of this tree I used for firewood. I baked bread, roasted meat, and enjoyed a good meal, and now I've used the rest to make a repulsive no-god. Here I am praying to a stick of wood. This lover of emptiness, of nothing, is so out of touch with reality, so far gone, that he can't even look at what he's doing. Can't even look at the no-god stick of wood in his hand and say, this is crazy. Remember these things, O Jacob. Take it seriously, Israel that you're my servant, I made you, shaped you, you're my servant. O oh, Israel, I'll never forget you. I've wiped the slate of all your wrongdoings. There's nothing left of your sins. Come back to me, come back, I've redeemed you. High heavens sing, God has done it. Deep earth shout, and you mountains sing. A forest choir of oaks and pines and cedars, God has redeemed Jacob. God's glory is on display in Israel. God, your Redeemer, who shaped your life in your mother's womb, says, I am God. I made all that is. With no help from you, I spread out the skies and laid out the earth. 
He makes the magicians look ridiculous and turns fortune tellers into jokes. He makes the experts look trivial and their latest knowledge look silly. But he backs the word of his servant and confirms the counsel of his messengers. He says to Jerusalem, be inhabited, and to the cities of Judah, be rebuilt. And to the ruins, I raise you up. He says to ocean, dry up. I'm drying up your rivers. He says to Cyprus, my shepherd, everything I want, you'll do it. He says to Jerusalem, be built, and to the temple, be established. Isaiah chapter 45. God's message to his anointed, to Cyrus, whom he took by the hand to give the task of taming the nations and of terrifying their kings. He gave him free reign, no restrictions. I'll go ahead of you, clearing and paving the road. I'll break down bronze city gates, smash padlocks, kick down barred entrances. I'll lead you to buried treasures, secret caches of valuables, confirmations that it is, in fact, I, God, the God of Israel, who calls you by your name. It's because of my dear servant Jacob, Israel, my chosen, that I've singled you out, called you by name, and given you this privileged work, and you don't even know me. I am God, the only God there is. Besides me, there are no real gods. I'm the one who armed you for this work, though you don't even know me, so that everyone from the east to west will know that I have no God rivals. I am God, the only God there is. I form light and create darkness. I make harmonies and create discords. I, God, do all these things. Open up heavens and rain, Clouds pour out buckets of my goodness. Loosen up earth and bloom salvation. Sprout right living, I God, generate all this. But doom to you who fight your maker. You're a pot at odds with the potter. Does clay talk back to the potter? What are you doing? What clumsy fingers? Would a sperm say to a father? Who gave you permission to use me to make a baby? Or a fetus to a mother? Why have you cooped me up in this belly? Thus God, the Holy of Israel, Israel's maker says, do you question who or what I'm making? Are you telling me what I can and cannot do? I made earth and I created man and woman to live on it. I handcrafted the skies and direct all the constellations in their turnings. And now I've got Cyrus on the move. I've rolled out the red carpet before him. He will build my city. He will bring home my exiles. I didn't hire him to do this. I told him. I, God of the angel armies, God says, the workers of Egypt, the merchants of Ethiopia, and those statu statuesque Sabians will all come over to you, all yours. Docile in chains, they'll follow you, hands folded in reverence, praying before you, amazing God is with you. There is no other God, none. Clearly you are a God who works behind the scenes. God of Israel, Savior God, humiliated all those others, will be ashamed to show their faces in public. Out of work and at loose ends, the makers of no God idols won't know what to do with themselves. The people of Israel, though, are saved by you, God. Saved with an eternal salvation, they won't be ashamed. They won't be at loose ends ever. God, creator of the heavens, he is, remember, God, maker of earth. He put it on its foundations, built it from scratch. He didn't go to all that trouble to just leave it empty, nothing in it. He made it to be lived in. This God says, I am God, the one and only. I don't just talk to myself or mumble under my breath. I never told Jacob, seek me in emptiness, in dark nothingness. I am God. I work out in the open, saying what's right, setting things right. So gather around. Come on in. All you refugees and castoffs, they don't seem to know much, do they? Those who carry around their no-God blocks of wood praying for help to a dead stick. So tell me what you think. Look at the evidence. Put your heads together. Make your case. Who told you, and a long time ago, what's going on here? Who made sense of things for you? Wasn't I the one, God? It had to be me. 
I'm the only God there is, the only God who does things right and knows how to help. So turn to me and be helped, saved. Everyone, whoever and wherever you are, I am God, the only God there is, the one and only, I promise in my own name, every word out of my mouth does what it says. I never take back what I say. Everyone is going to end up kneeling before me. Everyone is going to end up saying of me, yes, salvation and strength are in God. All who have raged against him will be brought before him, disgraced by their unbelief, and all who are connected with Israel will have a robust, praising, good life in God. Isaiah chapter 46. The god Bel falls down. God Nebo slumps. The no-god hunks of wood are loaded on mules and have to be hauled off, wearing out the poor mules, dead weight, burdens, who can't bear burdens, hauled off to captivity. Listen to me, family of Jacob, everyone that's left of the family of Israel, I've been carrying you on my back from the day you were born, and I'll keep on carrying you when you're old. I'll be there, bearing you when you're old and gray. <clears throat> I've done it and will keep on doing it, carrying you on my back, saving you. So to whom will you compare me, the incomparable? Can you picture me without reducing me? People with a lot of money hire craftsmen to make them gods. The artisan delivers the god, and they kneel and worship it. They carry it around in holy parades, then take it home and put it on a shelf. And there it sits, day in and day out, a dependable God, always right where you put it. Say anything you want to it, it never talks back. Of course, it never does anything either. Think about this, wrap your minds around it. This is serious business. Rebels, take it to your heart. Remember your history, your long and rich history. I am God, the only God you've had or ever will have. Incomparable, irreplaceable from the very beginning, telling you what the ending will be, all along letting you in on what is going to happen, assuring you, I'm in this for the long haul. I'll do exactly what I set out to do, calling that eagle, Cyrus, out of the east from a far country, the man I chose to help me. I've said it, and I'll most certainly do it. I've planned it, so it's as good as done. Now listen to me, you're a hard-headed bunch and hard to help. I'm ready to help you right now. Deliverance is not a long-range plan. Salvation, is, salvation isn't on hold. I'm putting salvation to work in Zion now and glory in Israel. Amen.